always shown you here on City Line that you can take any piece of furniture and transform it into something amazing. So we sent our DIY dynamic duo, Colin and Justin, to dig through the old and make something new. We're great believers in style for less, and secondhand doesn't have to be second best. Yes, we're on a mission, and today we're all about cheap chic. Go with that shape, that size, that piece there. The height of this piece could be great in the hallway, it could be great in the bedroom as well. Um, but obviously, that little orange tan that it's sporting at the moment is just a little bit dated. You could do a chinoiserie effect by painting it black and picking up the gold detail. And substantially, it's in great condition as well, isn't it? And I like the fact that you can find stuff, reuse it, and make, make use of it again, because otherwise stuff like this would go to landfill sites. So it's really, really rewarding to know that there's a, a second life. And who doesn't like a piece with hidden drawers? I like that. I don't know, it's funny what furniture says to you, isn't it? I mean, to me, that feels slightly like the kind of thing you would see, I don't know, in a Florida mansion. You can imagine it painted, you know, in white, little pastel touches, maybe even put mirrored sections on each of the shelves. What's really good about this as well, it's all really solid and really chunky, because so much modern furniture is actually really insubstantial, so something like this has already got a big benefit. OK, you know, the golden rule of buying second hand. Do you want it? Is it fantastic? There's, Does no, it point, there's no point buying it just because it's there. So, this little table or that little dresser at the back. Can we take them both? Hmm, greedy, Colin. I feel like you made the right choice. You picked this beautiful piece and completely transformed it. What do you think of this transformation, guys? <laughs> with the way that that piece turned out. You know, there's so much furniture out there, Tracy, that deserves a second chance. So as much as there's great merchandise in store, you can go to secondhand meccas mm -hmm. and find something wonderful and stamp your own identity on it. And that was our plan with this. This is beautiful. Okay, so this is, I mean, already gorgeous when you look at it, but I mean, look at what you did inside. <laughs> you know, it's worth actually paying attention to the little details. Yes. You know, you want hidden little surprises. You can see these little brass corners in here. Oh. We actually reused these existing handles, which I like. They look like little kind of drop earrings hanging yes. up there. Very glamorous. You know, and we just, we so cleaned glam. these. So we actually spent a couple of hours, you know, a bit of elbow grease to clean these up. Okay. But it's well worth it because you save so much money. And we cleaned these bad boys as well. They were black with age. You're like, okay. they just, they couldn't see them at all. But we buffed them up and suddenly, look at them like giant medals on the front of this. I think this is what makes the whole thing. I think it is as well, The gold detail's you, beautiful. You've got to make it kind of play within your space. You know, you've completely got to make it play. Chunky handles like these down here automatically suggest real firmness and strength yes. and solidity. Beautiful. And when you add all of those things together, the results will turn out like that. Well, come and show us how you did all of Alrighty, this. Because sure. it looks like a huge undertaking. Yeah. Uh, if you break it all down, it'll be more palatable for us so we can copy you. Exactly. You want to do that? You know what, I think first things first, decide on a look. Yes. Okay, we looked at that and we thought immediately of campaign furniture, which was very portable furniture. It actually started way back at Julius Caesar was the first kind of campaigner. Um, but you think about things with metal corners, little details to protect them. So immediately they gave us something to actually play with and then we decided on the colour. Now this is our own pattern of paint. Um, which is fantastic for furniture makeover and is so, so easy to use. Water-based. Okay. No smell at all. Oh, amazing. And, you know, dries incredibly fast. These and guys do everything. So brushes. paint, Colin and Justin paint. So yeah, yeah, exactly. You have gone in there and, and you know, done a colour palette that you love. Yeah, we do. Um, and so, and you have the paint finish that you love because you're DIYing all the time. Exactly. Yeah. Now, this is a chalky patina, so it's okay. really, really dry and really dusty looking. Yes. But it's such a fantastic piece of coverage. And also, because it's got such kind of properties, it's the brush cleanup at the end, you know, you just mm. run it under the tap. You don't need thinners nice. or paraffins or, do you know, any of those toxic things. It's just simply under the tap and off you go. Yeah, exactly. So you're going to sand your piece first. Yes. You know, it's worth actually sanding it up so you can get your paint to uh, key onto something. But it is this simple that we're just putting some of this colour onto some bare wood. 
It goes on really nicely. Oh, so, That's so, only so, one so, so coat. Smooth. So the lumber, uh, obviously, go to your local hardware store or what have you. This is from Lee Valley. Yeah, it uh, is. So thank yeah, you for exactly. That. Now, when the paint is dry, you only need one coat of this because mm -hmm. it's such uh, it's such a lovely piece of coverage. Mm -hmm. When you when when it's completely dry, you want to pick out the detail. Now, if you think of this as a corner, which is represented over there on the actual piece, you're just going to scrape oh, that's away. How you did it. And when you do that, you reveal a little bit of the original piece underneath, and it's almost like it's been time worn. Yes. And passed down centuries and I think had we left it completely grey then it's all very well but adding that little bit of depth and perceived age really makes the difference right. but I think the key thing when you're putting together a really good furniture upcycle like this is to think what can you do to add to it that will really give it extra rigidity now these handles again from Lee Valley they so, feel the heft of that Tracy they're really oh, solid yeah these are really solid and if you think about it that's the thing that you touch first on the piece of furniture so the perceived value is really really good it's like adding jewellery yeah. to a really nice piece and really enlivening it as well mm -hmm. so the difference between costume jewelry and the real thing. Yeah, it is. These are proper you want diamonds, something Tracy. that looks like this. <laughs> These are the real crown thing. jewels. Exactly. Yeah, if it's good as gold, you know, brass is good enough for this. That's the thing. And getting into the whole campaign thing, you know, it was furniture that was moved around. So they had protective corners, mm. you know. So you pop little details like that, screw them in place, mm -hmm. you know, and suddenly, not only are you actually potentially even curing, it could be that the old piece of furniture has got a few dents here and there. That's going to give you a nice straight corner. Right. But it also adds some much needed kind of like beautiful brass to the yes, whole lot. The thing about this patina paint as well, the chalky finish, is you've got to protect it because it can be susceptible to fingerprinting. So all our paints come with some little tins of furniture wax and beeswax. Oh, okay. And then you're going to rub that in on top like that. Now, I'd advise spending a little bit of time and you'll get a really soft, just slightly beyond matte finish. Okay. And that gives, again, that really kind of considered look. It's not just paint that's been slapped on. It's been done really, really carefully. But check as well, when you're buying old furniture for butterfly joints, all the things that show you that the piece that you're investing in is really good quality and is yes. going to last for the next stage of its life. There's so many little hints that you can look at to make sure that a piece um, is really aged. Oh, exactly. And you're going to find, when you find these pieces, they are built so amazingly well and sturdy. It does, it really makes sense to do DIY well, exactly. projects with them. Yeah. You know, construction tactics in, in days gone by were such that product, when it's good, will last. Yes. And there's no reason to say that that particular piece now won't last for another 20, 30, 40 years. Right. Uh, and when you've got your own mark stamped upon it like that, then why not enjoy it exactly. and love it? I want to know, what are you guys using that for now? That particular piece. Um, well, Is that actually, a bar? Uh, well, there's, listen, in our world, there's always alcohol. You know that? <laughs> you know, see, it always. could be a bar. Okay, it with could the doors be. There, you could put mirrors in there. It could be a bar. It yeah. could be a media unit. You could put a small television in there. Be great in the bedroom as well, you yes. know? So just get your thinking hats on and think about how you can make it your own. And remember, I think it's gorgeous. It's inexpensive. Right. You, you really just need the elbow grease to yeah, get it done, exactly. but it is worth it.